the Big Daddy G Show, the Big Daddy G Show. Here's your daddy. First of all, uh, I want to welcome you to the Big Daddy G Show. And uh, today we have a studio audience. Say hello, studio audience. All right, all right. We're glad to have you guys here. Um, and uh, today we're going to have some really, really cool uh, acts for you. Uh, the first thing that I wanted to do was uh, to say, um, to just like have a moment of silence for uh, the people of Puerto Rico uh, who are suffering right now. Um, I have been through many, many hurricanes uh, and uh, I know that it's tough and it's really scary, uh, but I've never uh, been through a hurricane like the Puerto Ricans have. But I know that the Puerto Ricans are tough and I know that they're going to make it, and I know they're going to be good, whether they get help from us or not down there. Um, they're going to make it because they're tough people. I know a lot of people that are from Puerto Rico, and they're some of the toughest people I've ever met. The other thing I wanted to talk to you guys about today was uh, what happened to, uh, or what happened in Las Vegas. Uh, from what I understand, some guy uh, went up into a hotel room and uh, shot a bunch of people. Uh, and from what I understand, the media was saying that something like uh, 200 people had died, but from what I understand now, it's uh, down to like 50 people, and 400 people were, uh, were injured. Um, I am uh, I'm not for uh, certain gun controls. I do believe that if you do have a mental problem, then you shouldn't have a gun, you know? Um, and, uh, but I do believe that you do need a gun or you need have some uh, way to protect yourself. Uh, people say, well, that's what the police are for, you know. Um, well, my view is um, that I don't need another man to protect me. I can protect myself. And if I have to have, you know, a rifle or a shotgun or, or whatever, then that's what I'm going to have to protect myself because the cops might not show up for five to ten minutes. Well, by then I could be dead. You know, and I'm not about to say, uh, hold on, don't kill me. You know, wait till the cops get here, um, and then you can go ahead and start shooting them. Well, you know, that's, that doesn't uh, work out. So I do believe that people need to be able to have a way to control them or protect themselves, not only from, uh, not only from people that are breaking into your house or trying to rob you or whatever, but also from uh, a uh, corrupt government. Um, and... I have a clip that I want to show you guys uh, first, and again, you know that we're uh, a PG-13 uh, show, and this uh, clip is uh, about this lady that uh, was in a Luby's cafeteria up in Waco a few years ago, I, I believe it was like 10 years ago, where some crazy guy drove his truck into the cafeteria and started shooting and killing people. And I felt that uh, she, the way that she uh, explained gun control and the way she explained the need to have protection uh, was perfect uh, for us today. Uh, you cannot uh, blame the gun because the gun wasn't, you know, that's not what killed you, whoever, you know. Uh, it wasn't the gun. It's like, you know, you see people that get killed by knives. Well, you can't outlaw knives. You can't outlaw, outlaw cars, you know, and trucks. So how could you outlaw an object you know so anyway we're gonna roll the clip in about 10 seconds and I want you guys to please pay attention to what this lady is talking about because she lived it she lived exactly uh, what the people in that concert lived through and um, and I think she explained it perfectly so please um, watch the clip and we'll be right back let me make sure that you understand I'm not here representing the NRA. I'm not even a member. Okay? Secondly, I'd like to say that uh, in your opening statements, um, you commented that uh, you commented specifically on my testimony saying that basically it had nothing to do with this issue. And I had to chuckle because then I noticed you had uh, Mr. Brady up here who was hit not with an assault weapon but with a 22 caliber revolver. So getting beyond that, I didn't grow up in a house with guns. I don't hunt, I personally abhor hunting, but I was given a gun by a friend when I was 21. 
to carry in my purse for self-defense, and I was taught how to use it. A couple of years ago, my parents and I went to a cafeteria in Texas on a bright, sunny day. We weren't in a dark alley where we weren't supposed to be. And as you all know the story, this madman drove his truck through the window, and he began shooting. Well, immediately, my father and I got down on the floor and put the table up in front of us. And this guy kept shooting. And you're thinking, what, you know, what could it be? Is it, is it a robbery? That's the first thing that generally comes to mind. And he keeps shooting. It took me a good 45 seconds to realize that this man wasn't there to commit a robbery. He wasn't there for a hit. He was there to simply shoot as many people as he possibly could. Now, I'd like to make something clear. I hear all this talk about how many bullets can go in a clip. I've been there. I can tell you it doesn't matter. It takes one second to switch out a clip. You can have one bullet or a hundred bullets. It doesn't matter, guys. I've been there. He goes, dump, dump, just like that. That's not enough time to rush a man. I promise you. When I finally realized what was occurring, I thought, I got him. And I reached for my purse. He was maybe 12 feet away. You know, is it possible my gun could have jammed? Sure. Is it possible I could have missed? Sure. But I can tell you I've hit much smaller targets at much greater distances. But then I realized that a couple of months earlier I had made the stupidest decision of my life. I took my gun out of my purse and left it in my car. Because as you well know, in the state of Texas, it's sometimes a felony offense to carry a gun in your purse. I can tell you that I'm not mad at the guy that did this. As he continued, it was obvious that he was a madman. My father at that point said, I'm gonna, I, I've got to do something, I've got to do something. He's going to kill everybody in here, and he rushed the man. No way. This guy turned, shot him in the chest. He went down, uh, was obviously mortally wounded. For whatever reason, that made the man change directions and go off to my left. Shortly thereafter, someone at the back of the restaurant broke out a window. When I saw what looked like an opportunity to escape, I turned around and I grabbed my mother by the shirt and I said, come on, come on, we've got to run, we've got to get out of here. And then my feet grew wings and I was out the back window. As soon as I got out, I realized that my mother had not followed me out. And as I learned from the police officers, she had crawled over to where my father was and cradled him until the guy got back around her, put the gun to her head, she looked up at him, put her head down, and he pulled the trigger. My parents had just had their 47th wedding anniversary. She wasn't going anywhere. As I mentioned, I'm not really mad at the guy that did this, and I'm certainly not mad at the guns that did this. They didn't walk in there by themselves and pull their own triggers. The guy that did it was a, a, a lunatic. That's like being mad at a, a rabid dog. I'm mad at my legislators for legislating me out of the right to protect myself and my family. I would much rather be sitting in jail with a felony offense on my head and have my parents alive. As far as these so-called assault weapons, you say that they don't have any defense use. You tell that to the guy that I saw on a videotape of the L.A. riots, standing up on his rooftop protecting his property and his life from an entire mob with one of these so-called assault weapons. Tell me that he didn't have a legitimate self-defense use. Just one final statement. I'm, I've been sitting here getting more and more fed up with all of this talk about these pieces of machinery having no legitimate sporting purpose, no legitimate hunting purpose, People, that is not the point of the Second Amendment. The Second Amendment is not about duck hunting. And I know I'm not going to make very many friends saying this, but it's about our right, all of our rights, to be able to protect ourselves from all of you guys up there. All right, well, we're back. Um, 
I felt that that uh, particular clip was going to be very um, educational for some of you people that believe that, oh, we have to have gun control and get you know guns out of people's hands. Again, um, our missiles do not kill people by themselves. Somebody has to push that button to set that missile off. So uh, you cannot, in my opinion, you can't outlaw an object. So, um, all right, now we're done with the serious educational part of the show, and now we're going to party. So, um, I want to introduce uh, to you a comedian uh, that, is, that, that is very, very funny, and uh, I found um, a clip of him on uh, YouTube that I thought uh, was hilarious. So, uh, I like the fact that he went to all this trouble to, uh, to film a clip uh, of him of himself uh, with someone else. And I just thought it was really funny and I thought that you guys really enjoy it. So um, the guy's name is Ty Nguyen and uh, he is Vietnamese. So uh, no, I'm not gonna ask him where authentic Vietnamese food is. I'm not going to, because I already know where it is. So anyway, all right. So we're gonna show you this clip in about five seconds and uh, sit back, relax, uh, take a puff, take a rip or take a sip. There we go. Thank you so much for meeting me here on short notice. Thank you for being here today. How can I help you? Um, a friend referred me to you because I was stressed out about my standard special on September 19th at Stateside Paramount. So I'm just stressed out about the future, how it's going to go down. And she told me that you could uh, see into the future. So I'd like to know some answers. So you come to the right place. Uh -huh. Let us bring them forward. Oh, okay. <coughs> what questions do you have for me? I want to make sure September 19th is free of any hurricane, so do you see any hurricane on September 19th? Ah, uh, yes. Well, before I answer your question, uh -huh. we forgot to settle up. Oh, yeah, you do need to make a living. <clears throat> totally understandable. How much? It's $1,000. $1,000? That's the friend price. So you're actually getting a great deal. Jeez, well, that's kind of, that's more than my whole budget for my standard special. This is merely a drop in the bucket of the money you'll have from your successful career, I can already tell. All right, your question was, will there be any kind of storm that would interrupt your special? Yes. Let me see her. Mm. Oh wow, there will be a great storm. A big storm outside the pyramid. A storm? A big storm. A storm of people. Oh. You're gonna sell it out, huh? Yeah? Yeah. It's the only thing happening in town on September 19th. This is gonna be such a big event. I didn't realize you were such a popular comedian. Well, uh, thank you. Me neither. Is your hand again? For some reason, there's a lot of people talking like pirates. Like pirate? That's the only thing I can see. There's people talking like pirates. That makes sense, because September 19th is also National Talk Like a Pirate Day. But well, I don't think it's any competition. Oh, let's hope not. There's not a Pirate of the Caribbean fan out there. What else are we gonna read here? My second question is, um, how will I perform that night? I'm kind of have performer anxiety. I just want to be perfect. I'm on camera. I don't know how I do. And, uh, well, for this, I'm gonna have to see the bottom of your foot. Come again? I'm going to need to read the bottom of your foot if you want to know a specific question that way. That's just oh, okay. Um, I guess I'll pay you a thousand dollars. Oh, wow. Pretty good. Your performance is going to be on point 100%, but you should definitely cut your toenails. I have a step on now. I don't know. You want to get laid after the show, right? I think so. You want to get with ladies. That's like, that's the reason you're doing comedy, right? Yeah. 
Sebastian, um, you know, since you're a psychic and everything, I don't know, comedian might be against this, but I don't have time to, you know, try new material. And since you're a psychic, can I try out some jokes? Sure. And you know me know that people are going to love it? Let's hear it. All right. All right, here's the first one, okay? I think people that perform in Olympics are worse than stripper. They need mommy and daddy attention. That's going to kill. Yeah? That's such a good joke. Think Pe so? People love to be informed, and this joke is full of facts and strippers, and who doesn't love titties? Even the spiritual love titties. Well, it is based on statistics. That's a fantastic joke. I'm very impressed. Very impressed. Okay, here's another one. If somebody told me to go to hell, I would jump down a volcano because a volcano is a hot place that actually exists. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny! You're opening your set with that joke. It is a hot joke. It's Alright, this one, this one's kind of kinky. Uh, I told my co-worker a dick joke at work, you know, one of one of my greatest hits. My manager walked by and said, Ty, that joke is not appropriate for work. I'm surprised he considered packaging cocaine as work. <laughs> right? Some office joke. <laughs> Are they all this good? Um, you seem to enjoy them the most. Oh, and I've already heard them before, because I looked into the future, and they're still funny. Oh, man, it's gonna be a hit. Alright. Yeah, thank you, Sebastian. You're welcome. I would high-five you, but my hands are very sensitive. It's all good. Alright, see ya. I bet I can drink it in, uh... Oh, hey kids, we're back. And um, like I said, I hope you enjoyed the clip. It was pretty funny. So um, now I'm going to introduce Mr. Ty Wynn. And uh, sit back, relax, uh, make sure that you've got uh, things that you can uh, puff on or rip on or sip on. So ladies and gentlemen, please, please welcome Ty Wynn. Hey, what's up? Thank you, Daddy G, Big Daddy G, for having me on here. I feel really weird calling another man Big Daddy. That's the first time for me. But I'm happy to be here. I'm on television. This is like the peak of my career. My mom, she wasn't very supportive of my comedy career when I first started until uh, I sold out Stateside Paramount, and she was in the audience, and she just saw the people reaction, and then she was like, whoa, he got something going on. But before that, I had to stop visiting my parent, period, if I wanted a career in comedy. Just three weeks ago, I went to my parent house, and this is what my mom told me, Ty, you have a mess up haircut. You need to get a haircut. No job is going to hire you with that haircut. First off, I'm not even looking for a job. <laughs> Second, to prove a point wrong, with this haircut, I could get any IT job in Austin. <laughs> and guess what? I'm well aware that I have a messed up haircut. This is a messed up haircut. This haircut looked like a hurricane hit a house and only took the roof off. That's what it looked like. But I'm keeping it for a reason, okay? And here's the reason. About five months ago, I asked a friend of mine Yo, dog, my hair is growing long and I'm growing bald. You think I should get a haircut? And he told me, nah, man, you should keep it. 
That's the funniest thing about you. So yeah, that's why I'm keeping it. I'm sacrificing getting made for art. But I am taking donation though. <laughs> So yeah, ladies, <laughs> donate to uh, fine art. <laughs> oh man. So if I had a girlfriend with me through this time, then I know that she's the one. She's the keeper. Cause she been with me through my toughest time when my hairline was receding. You could say she was there with me through the thick and thin. <laughs> I guess the reason why I do stand-up comedy is because I hate my day job so much with a passion. Now I feel like to come up with new material, I have to find another job that I, I hate so much. What would give me motivation to write some more? I don't tell any of my coworkers that I do stand-up comedy because they're dream killers. That's why. <laughs> I made a mistake of telling a guy once, and the first question he asked me was, well, how much do you get paid? And that pisses me off. <laughs> that just showed me that some people only do things if money's involved. I wish I would have told him. Actually, Scott, it doesn't pay me anything, but it keeps me from bringing my nine millimeter to work. <laughs> Could you buy me nuns today, Scott? Forgot my wine at home again. Sorry, was too busy cleaning my nine millimeter. But I couldn't be mad at Scott, though. I used to be the same way as he was. I used to love stand-up comedy, but I never pursued it because I didn't see any money in it. Until one day, I got home from work, and I was just so tired, sitting on the couch watching television. <laughs> and while watching television, all of a sudden, a night bulb went off in my head. Hey, I enjoy watching television. And though there's no money in it, so why should doing stand-up comedy be any different? I mean, keeping up with the Kardashian never paid my bill, and believe me, I kept up. <laughs> as much as I hate to admit it, um, the reason why I didn't pursue stand-up comedy wasn't the money issue. It was that I was afraid to step outside of my comfort zone, which could be a very difficult thing to do. Some people live their whole life without ever stepping outside of their comfort zone. Those people are called racists. <laughs> Those people read the book, How to Kill a Mockingbird, and go, wow, now that's a happy ending. Five-star review on Amazon for this baby. <laughs> so I work at at and at a car center for about three years now, and I don't even remember one happy day there. <laughs> the only time I was happy there was when the system went down. Working there made me a big fan of natural disaster. Um, I remember the only time I was excited was when the fire alarm went off at work and they evacuated all of us into the parking lot. And I remember I was so happy in the parking lot that I got on my knees and I prayed to God, please God, please help me out. Please do me a favor and burn this place to the ground. For I do not have the strength nor willpower to quit this job and go on Indeed.com and search for a new one. For I am way too preoccupied with the Kardashian. I know the Lord will forgive me, for he is my shepherd. 
He know my weakness. Big booty woman with money. <laughs> Please burn this place to the ground. And I promise I will never, ever watch that show again. <laughs> Turn out, it was just a fire drill. <coughs> so I got on my knees and I prayed to God for nothing. What I should have done was pray to Satan. Because <laughs> Satan got that fire. We all know that. It says on the Bible. <laughs> Just kidding, guys. Just kidding. Do not pray to Satan. This is what happens when you pray to Satan. You become uh, an Asian male stand-up comedian. <laughs> Trust me, I wouldn't wish this on my worst enemy. But I'm grateful to be doing this, though. I mean, what other career would give me a chance to be on public television and on the Big Daddy G show? I figure if stand-up comedy doesn't work out, I'll become an immigration attorney so I can get people from other countries into the United States. And I came up with a slogan for it. My slogan is, Thai Nguyen, Immigration Attorney. If I can get me in, I can get you in too. If I can't get you in, I'll marry you. Um, I have one minute, what else do I want to talk about? Uh, I get really nervous before I get on stage, so I listen to a lot of hip-hop music. Uh, I listen to DMX. DMX music just have that aggressive, intense energy that I need to help me deliver my <laughs> dick joke. <laughs> Especially if it's like a big dick <laughs> joke. And I need to sound convincing, <laughs> just in case I see some baby mama type in the crowd. Uh, for those who are not familiar with DMX, he's a part-time rapper, but a full-time canine. <laughs> it's true. All of his songs have dog noises in them that he made himself. Now, I don't know why X wouldn't hire professional dogs. My guess is jealousy, maybe. X want to be the top dog in the town, but also the top dog in the pound. If there's a TV show called Man vs. X, Man vs. Beast, X might have to fight himself. And that's it, guys. Thank you guys for watching this on public television. Really appreciate it. All right. <laughs> Hey, Ty, come on over, come on over. Dude, that was awesome. That hey, was awesome. Have a seat. Appreciate it. Let's talk a little bit about Mr. Ty Nguyen. Um, sure. So you're from Vietnam? Yeah. Okay. And uh, whereabouts in Vietnam? Whereabouts? Hanoi. Yeah. Hanoi? Yeah. Okay. So do you have any family out there in Hanoi you want to say hi to? Um, I don't know their name. That's kind of messed up. You don't know your family's name? I don't. Oh. I don't at all. I want to party with this guy, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. But yeah, shout out to all my relatives in Vietnam. Awesome. Awesome. So um, when did you come to the United States? When I was about five. Were you five? Okay. And oh. I'm 29 now, okay. so that's 24 years. 24 years ago? Oh. Yeah. Awesome, dude. And um, what do you do? I mean, I know you do stand up, but uh, what do you do other than stand up? Do you, I mean, do you have another job that you do? Uh, I do Uber Eat. Uber? Okay. Yeah. Okay. And that's uh, for people that don't know Uber, um, people that are from uh, other countries, because we have uh, people from other countries that watch the show uh, through our website. And um, Uber is basically you use your own car. And you people, huh, okay, <laughs> you're going to figure out, or you're going to find out how spoiled Americans are. Let's say that um, you don't feel like going out. So you call Uber Eats, and they send somebody to go pick up whatever food you ordered, and they bring it to your door, okay? That's how spoiled Americans are. Uh, 
and I, um, <laughs> I use Uber Eats, so, <laughs> as you can tell. Um, so anyway, um, so I didn't it's, know it it's you before. yeah, I think you have. Um, so anyway, I, um, it, it's a great little program, you know, that, that uh, is here in Austin, and it's, a, it's just a, a service, you know. So um, what, what about, uh, you, you came to this country 24 years ago, yes. correct? And did you come by yourself, or did you come with family, mom, dad? Uh, or? I came with my whole family, okay. my mom, my dad, uh -huh two of my brother and my little sister. Okay. And we got here because uh, my dad, he fought in the Vietnam War. Okay. So um, after the Vietnam War, they didn't bring us to America right away. There was like a long period. Right. So um, when it happened, it was like, whoa. It, it was a dream come true for them. Uh -huh. I was little, so I didn't know about the harsh condition of Vietnam. Yeah. Yeah, I don't remember like ever being sad in Vietnam. Uh -huh. But in America, I remember being sad, so that's kind of crazy. But what makes you sad in America? Or what made you sad when you were five? Or did what is it that you remember um, that made you sad? Just fitting in okay. and uh, not understanding the culture. Right. Like, when I was on the airplane, I yeah. had to go pee, right? Yeah. And I didn't know how to open the door okay. to the restroom because yeah. I live in the jungle in Vietnam. Right. I never seen a doorknob before. Wow. So I got so embarrassed right, and I didn't right. know English. So I just went back to my seat. I yeah. put my jacket over myself and I just let it go. I just wow. I just uh pee. Wow. Yeah, and I was on FM like three or four days. So you can imagine how many times I pee on myself. Wow. Yeah. Well that uh, yeah, that could well <laughs> I bet the people around you knew how many times. I hear you, um so let me ask you a question. So when you got here, uh, -huh. uh if you hadn't if you didn't know how to open up a, a bathroom door, what was it when you got here that you went, what is this? You know, what, do you remember what it was? Like, I'll, I'll tell you why I'm asking this question. I um, had a friend of mine that came oh. from a, uh, a state in Mexico. And uh, what a lot of people don't understand is that Mexico has states just like the United States. So if you go to Georgia, you know, people have an accent that call them tiny like this, you know, they got that little, and you know, you come to Texas and hey, how you doing, you know. Um, well, Mexico has the same thing. They have, yeah. uh, in the different states, they have different accents that they, the, that, you know, they're raised with. But anyway, he came to the United States and uh, uh, got an apartment here and, and he did not know what a VCR was. Wow. So uh, he knew what a TV was because he had seen one, mm -hmm. you know. But, uh, but he didn't know what a VCR was. So, and I was like, you don't know what a VCR is, you know? And so, uh, now I'm talking about, you know, probably 15 years ago. So, you know, it, would just, it just kind of amazed me. So, um, what, what was it that amazed you that you saw, you know, like, was it a Cadillac car? Or was it a, you know, a big screen TV? Or what was it that you saw? Maybe a cell phone? Or what was it that you saw that really just, you went, what the... Um, white woman. A white woman. No, I was kidding. Uh, <laughs> actually, they scared uh, me. Yeah. Everything pretty much tripped me out from the air condition. Yeah. Um, to the toilet. Yeah. Like we didn't have like right. flushing toilet in right. Vietnam. Um, video game tripped me out. Yeah. Um, television, right. blockbuster tripped me out. Um, pretty much everything you can imagine. Right. I had to adapt to it. Right. And what uh, what is your favorite kind of food now? My favorite food. Yeah. Uh, this actually surprised a lot of people because uh -huh. they expect me to say like some Vietnamese dish. Yeah. But it's actually pizza. That's my oh, favorite. Oh, nice. That's, yeah. And what's your favorite kind of pizza in town? My favorite kind of pizza. I would say just pepperoni, pepperoni. and sausage. Okay. But I mean, is there any particular restaurant that you like to go, get your pizza from? I go Double Dave. Double Dave's? Okay. Yeah. Well, um, we're actually going to do a, a segment on a company called Nikki's Pizza. Nikki's Pizza. I believe it's N I K I apostrophe S, Nikki's Pizza. Okay. So if you ever get a chance, uh, uh, go to a Nikki's Pizza and order their pepperoni pizza. Yeah. Okay, it's ten ninety nine carry out, okay? And you can buy as many as you want. And, uh, but dude, it's delicious. It's kind of like a yep. New York style. 
uh, pizza. I'm, yeah, for a large, dude, wow, it's a big pizza. Wow. Tyrone can eat the whole thing by himself. So, um, so yeah, so Nikki's Pizza, we'll be doing a segment on them. So, um, would have you been back to Vietnam since you came here? No, no, I haven't. Would you, would you, do you think you could go back to live there in Vietnam? Um, to be honest, probably not, because that's uh -huh. like, it's still communist, so that's a limit on freedom of speech. Right. So I wouldn't be able to say what I say in stand-up comedy that mm -hmm. I could do here. Oh, so over sure. there, all my material probably has to be like PG. Right, right. And um, praise <laughs> Vietnam or something. Right. Yeah, I don't think I could. Okay. And yeah. um, now you said you performed at the Paramount. Tell me about that. Tell me about the Paramount. The Paramount? Uh, oh, it was, hold on a second. Yeah. Let me tell you what the Paramount is. The Paramount is this huge theater uh, on Congress Avenue. And from what I understand, Sandy Bullock bought it. Um, really? And she owns it. Yeah, from what I understand, Whoa. Uh, she bought it uh, a few years ago. And uh, so tell me about you performing there. It's a big uh, theater. So tell me about that. Um, I perform at Stateside Paramount. Uh -huh. um, it started when I had like an hour of material. Okay. And I just want to perform it so I could be done with it and mm -hmm. move on. Because you have to be able to retire your material, mm -hmm. do new material to get better. Okay. So my goal is just to get better as a okay. comedian. I was going to shoot it at uh, Cap City. Uh -huh. Have you heard of Cap City yeah. Comedy? Yes, many, many times. But been I there don't many know. times, been thrown out yeah. of there many times. Yes, go ahead. Um, thing is, I don't know like the manager at Cap City, uh -huh. so I shy to ask. So, um, hmm. um, well, a maybe friend. Maybe we can help you with that. Yeah, right. a friend from my next special, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so a friend, uh, his name is James. He uh -huh. approached me because he done theater there. He done yeah. play and stuff. He's like, why don't you uh, try and book uh, Stateside Paramount? Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'll help you coordinate with them. So, uh, you know, uh, put a thousand dollar down, uh -huh. and uh, you make money back from selling the tickets. The tickets, right. And uh, I didn't think that I would sell much at all. Mm -hmm. I was running around doing a uh, promotion, yeah. and the most that I got to was like 90 people, I think, just mm -hmm. all the promotion I did. Yeah. on my myself by making veto just asking people to get on comedy show mm -hmm. and passing out my business card afterward mm -hmm. and uh putting up poster and just make facebook posts and um um a female comedian friend of mine karina magard shout out to karina magard uh she uh she won. Uh, she reached out to the Austin Chronicle mm -hmm. to uh, do an article on me, yeah. and uh, she interviewed me and wrote the article. Yeah. And um, I didn't think that I would make uh, the cover of the Chronicle. Mm -hmm. I thought it was gonna give me like a page or two on the inside. So it was kind of weird. Like they took pictures of me and they took like a whole bunch of pictures. I was like, wow, why would you even do that? Mm -hmm. So it was, it was surprising when Thursday morning I found out that I was on the front cover of the Chronicle. Nice. And that helped us uh, sell out my show, sold out 300 seats. Nice. Well, um, I, I love the Chronicle. Um, they're, uh, I know they just got bought out by a company in Houston a while back. Uh, but uh, do they? it's a very, very Austin style, Austin flavor uh type magazine uh, my suggestion would be to look it up online instead of getting a newspaper because then you kill more trees but um, but I do love the Chronicle they're awesome people um, so let me ask you a question who is your favorite comedian uh, or what you know what inspired you to become a comedian um, what inspired me mm -hmm. what inspired me was like I stated uh, doing my comedy bit. I was working at a job where I wasn't growing creatively and I feel kind of dead inside. Just every day feeling kind of like drained from doing customer service. Mm -hmm. I would go home feeling drained. So I thought, hey, what can I do that would give me an adrenaline rush? Mm -hmm. And uh, my coworkers, <clears throat> they all said, Ty, you're so funny. You should do stand-up comedy. 
So I thought, why not uh, try a stand-up comedy? I knew that if I get on stage, whether I do good or bad, mm -hmm. I'll get an adrenaline rush. Yeah. Yeah. And I didn't tell my coworker that I do stand-up comedy until like six months. And okay. Yeah, I wasn't confident enough. But now you are. Yeah. And you're doing awesome, dude. Um, I want to thank you for coming and doing the set oh, uh, today with us on the show. Um, when I saw you, I saw a clip of you, and I just thought, I just couldn't stop laughing. Yeah. And yes, I'd been drinking, but I just couldn't stop laughing. And it was just, I mean, it was awesome. And I'm so glad you came and, you know, shared a little bit about your life with us. Um, a lot of people um, that don't understand what's going on, uh, you know, this guy's from Vietnam, and he's doing stand-up. So if you're sitting there going, oh, I can't do it, da, da, da. dude, this guy's doing stand-up, and he's from another country, you know, and you can barely understand him, but he's still doing it. <laughs> so there. So anyway, dude, thank you so much for coming. Oh, my pleasure. Um, Thanks for having me. Um, move on over a little bit from the couch. We got uh, Levi, I believe, is coming first. Tyrone, um, we have a, a we have a band called Loner or Lunar, Lunar. Uh, Lunar Band, and, and they're awesome. Uh, again, I saw another video of them. And so I want to welcome, uh, is it, who's coming on first, Chris or, or Levi? Oh, both of them at the same time. Okay. Well, come on in, guys. I didn't know you, I thought we were going to do one at a time, but I guess not. So we're going to do a threesome. Hell yeah. Well, foursome, because we, you know, we got Ty here. So um, <clears throat> tell me a little bit about you guys. How did you, uh, well, first of all, this is Chris, and that's Levi. And uh, uh, where are you from, Chris? We're both from Paris, Texas. Okay, Paris, Texas. I've been to Paris, Texas. Shout I went out. to a, a drag show race. Shout out, Paris. And uh, that's Tyron's favorite film, Paris, Texas, by the way. Um, and what made you guys, uh, your, your style of performing uh, or the music that you perform is very unique, you know. Uh, it's not, I don't know, it's kind of like rap, but it's not, you know. So, you know, it's kind of kind of cool. So, uh, what, uh, how did you guys come up with this particular style? Man, a lot of trial and error. Uh -huh. So for the first, I'd say, year I was living here, uh -huh. um, me and Chris just tried a lot of things. Yeah. And then we, when, we, when we first started playing in public is when we started to figure out what went well. Yeah. Like some, some of the crowds weren't just vibing certain things, so I just switched it up. And personally, I just did a lot of research on the artist I liked. Uh -huh and was like, I want my crowds, I want the people that listen to my music to react this way. Right. And so it just kind of came out like that. And who was, like, who inspired you? Well, as far as, like, the flow, yeah. uh, I, I grew up listening to Lil Wayne. Okay. <laughs> as a, yeah. Uh, here, Ty, over there. Yeah, yeah Wheezy. Um, yeah, Wheezy, baby. Um, shout out to Louisiana. Um, but other than that, it was, it was that and the Gorillaz. That, that's kind of like, I, I really wasn't too into hip-hop. I liked it a lot, but I liked rock music a lot in high school. And then in college, me and him both studied um, percussion. So we were actually music teachers for a bit, but we wanted to play a little more. Nice. So, yeah. and, um, and what about you? Who inspired you to, to get into music? Well, um, really one of my first teachers inspired me to get into music. That's why I went into teaching mm -hmm. uh, from the beginning. I really wanted to play. But uh, all of this group, he does all the writing. Yeah. Most of the inspiration is on his end. I just hit okay. stuff with him. But... <laughs> um, we, we did grow up together, so we have a lot of the same influences. Awesome, awesome. And um, uh, you've lived in Austin for how long now? Five years for me. Two Five and years. a half for me. Okay. And so you came here first, and then he followed? I yeah. Mean, were you guys friends in Paris? Oh, yeah. We, oh, yeah we've yeah. known each other since 2002, three. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So you've known each other for a while. Yeah. So are you, any of you guys married? No. <laughs> Separated. <laughs> They're single. <laughs> They're single. <laughs> um, I noticed that on your band, a lot of people aren't going to know who the guy is on your band, but people that are cool are going to know that that's Cab Calloway. Now, who's Cab Calloway? If uh, you want to go back in time, uh, there was a movie called The Blues Brothers, which uh, Cab Calloway performed in. And uh, he had, uh, they were doing Minnie the Smoocher. That's the, Minnie yeah, the Minnie Moocher. The, yeah. yeah. Um, he, uh, performed it, but at the time, this was in the 70s, and he performed it more of a disco. And the director said, that's not what I want. I want how you used to it back in the 30s and 40s, you know. Yeah, and so he ended up doing it again, and that's what you see in the uh, movie, uh, The Blues Brothers, that particular uh, way, like, you know, back in the 30s and 40s. So um, 
what we're going to do in a few minutes, we're going to show uh, a clip of a, uh, of a segment called Useless Information um, that I came up with because uh, I've explained this before, but a lot of times uh, I'll go somewhere and, and nobody's talking about nothing. So I say, hey, dude, I have some useless information. Would you like to hear it? And people are always like, yeah, dude, I love useless information. So we're going to do this little clip on useless information. So Tyrone, do you want to go ahead and roll that? And, and guys, uh, enjoy this clip. Um, and here we go. Welcome to another episode of useless information. This information will get you a lot of attention, so pay attention, kids. Okay, the very first useless information is the Caesar salad. It was discovered in Tijuana in the 1920s. It wasn't discovered in Greece or nothing like that. So please remember, the Caesar salad was discovered in Tijuana in the 1920s. Useless information number two. One quarter of the bones in your body are in your feet. Did you know that? One quarter of the bones in your body are in your feet. Useless information number three. Crocodiles and alligators are very agile on the land. They're very fast. But they're not very agile, man. So if you're being chased by an alligator or a crocodile, you go to Zigzag. I like that name, Zigzag, for some reason. Some of you will know why. <laughs> okay, useless information. Number four. The Seattle Fremont Bridge. It rises up and down more than any drawbridge in the world. There's the Seattle Fremont Bridge. You need to remember this information because it will help you get attention. Information that's useless for you. Number five. Right-handed people live an average of nine years longer than left-handed people. You heard it here. Right-handed people live an average of nine years longer than left-handed people. Now take that and think about it. And don't forget, you're making me crazy, man. I got to go now. I got to go get my lighter. Peace out, man. I got to go. Um, I'm out of Crown Royals, or I'm sorry, Brown Joyal. Anyway, uh, kids, Lunar. I can remember being a little kiddo, sitting on the back of the couch, looking out the window, hearing my mom talk on the phone while my bros play Nintendo. The amount of problems I had back then added up to zero. Who would have known my mom turned out to be my hero? Taught me to stand stronger than a flamingo. Showed me how to stretch my money longer than a limo. She said, son, you can make it. You just got to learn the lingo and make an impact. Don't live in someone else's shadows because you don't want to regret weeping like a willow and grow up like a weirdo and drive a rainbow colored pinto. So I had to slow down and go find my own tempo. I swam through life like a minnow. I had to build a team with my kinfolk. I've always been taught to be a leader, never really learned how to follow. I didn't even know why. I didn't even know my life was like this All these obstacles that I have to climb They get in my way, but I don't let them slow me down Slow me down I remember my mom taking me out to shop We never had much money, but the fact that she tried was worth a lot She always put food on the table and held down a steady job And was my support system like a Photoshop backdrop 
and watch me grow up on the blacktop. Scream and go chase your dreams, boy, don't you dare stop. Because your mind is your cash crop. So go to school and eavesdrop and retain more knowledge than a bookshop. So you can spread your wings one day and go lead your own flock. Because, son, if you try and skim by life and walk on a sidewalk, you will become a statistic and turn into human livestock. So raise your life up like you always walk on a catwalk and stay sharp like Mr. Sherlock and get past the bull and skip all the small talk. She said, son, to be found the first, you have to be lost. I didn't even know why. I didn't even know my life was like this All these obstacles that I have to climb They get in my way, but I don't let them slow me down Slow me down If it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be where I am today, I am today. You showed me the way Always better than yesterday. Don't dwell in the past. Live in the present. My mom would always say, son, you can lead a horse to water, but you cannot make him drink in this line. It made me think. But why won't the horse drink? Because, son, you let him down the path. But if he bears no thirst, there is no hurt. I'm waiting for time to pass. So I took a step back and started to do the math. So basically, first you must hurt and learn from the past. And my mom replied, son, that is very close to correct. I didn't even know why I didn't even know my life was like this All these obstacles that I have to climb They get in my way But I don't let them slow me down Slow me down Shout out to Big Daddy G. Shout out to everybody watching back in Paris. If you're watching, we love you. Thanks to everybody that came out to be in the studio audience. Big Daddy G on the cowbell back there. Told me. It's our last tune. We're going to try to crank this one out real quick. Hey. Go and get down. Let me 
me see how you get it. How you get it? Let me see you get it up in the city, girl. Yeah, get with it. Yeah, get with it, girl. Yeah, I'm trying to dance all night, girl. Trying to get to know you. Trying to get to know you. Now I'm playing, girl. These games are starting to annoy me. Starting to annoy me. Girl, I see you from across the room and my eyes get wide. I hope you ain't dumb, cause I'm zoomed on them thighs. Where you been? Where you been? Where you been, baby? Hey, this girl is fine, so sweet like red wine. Baby, come on, let me get you now. Hey, let me get you now. Might take a chance at a glance soon. I might not take you out on a dance, knock out your lights. Now don't you fight the feeling that feels tonight. Taking flight higher than flying kites. Grace the heights, coasting on cloud night. Feeling fine, feeling fine, so your mind unwind. Oh, uh, wait, I just met you, but it feel great. Don't debate your hips when they really want to shake. Cause you got you feeling so good, feeling so good, feeling so good. Can you relate? Moving your body and let it gyrate. Keep it forward like a shape. Wait, keep it popping so often the other people want to hate and it's the game, but you remain calm. Whispering on my ear, grabbing on my arm, saying, baby, don't move too quick for me. Just bring it back on me. But please prove them hits for me. I can't wait for you to take me back to your place. I just know that you are going to be my ace. Girl, you better go ahead and get up by my face. Because I don't play that. So go ahead and just go and get down. Let me see how you get it. How you get it? Let me see you get it up in the city, girl. Yeah, get with it. Yeah, get with it, girl. Yeah, I'm trying to dance all night, girl. Trying to get to know you. Trying to get to know you. Now I'm playing, girl. These games starting to annoy me. Starting to annoy me. Go and get down. Let me see how you get it. How you get it? Let me see you get it up in the city, girl. Yeah, get with it. Yeah, get with it, girl. Yeah, I'm trying to dance all night, girl. Trying to get to know you. Trying to get to know you. Now I'm playing, girl. These games starting to annoy me. Starting to annoy me. Thank you guys. We appreciate it. We ran out of time and we would have kept going. I forgot my drink. Hold on a second. I hate to be alone. All right, so guys, thank you very much for coming on the show and thank you for letting me uh, play cowbell. Uh, with wow. you. Um, took me years and years and years of uh, not practicing to get that good. <laughs> so um, I want to thank everybody that uh, watched today. Right now, uh, we're this is the part that's going to be uh, the part for that's going to go onto YouTube. It's a little bit longer than our show. So um, one of the things I want to do is I uh, want to get Ty to come in and uh, take a bow. Please, everybody, a round of applause for Mr. Ty. Thank you so much, Mr. Ty. <clears throat> awesome comedian. Please keep an eye uh, open for him. And uh, Lunar, also, keep an eye open for these guys because they're going places. They're here. So you got to be good if they're here. So uh, the other thing I wanted to say was I want to thank the crew, as I spit over everybody, uh, Nikki and uh, Sam, and especially CJ today because CJ – is sick and uh, I told Tyrone I said well this is going to prove if CJ really wants to be a DP which is a, a director of photography a cameraman I said if he doesn't show up then it's just a hobby but if he shows up that means it's in his heart so um, this is uh, to CJ thank you very much for showing up CJ awesome and thank you very much for coming and we'll see you next week. The Big Daddy Peace G out. Show. And Viva Mexico! The Big Daddy G Show. The Big Daddy G Show. Hi ho, what do you know? The Big Daddy G Show. The Big Daddy G Show. The Big Daddy G Show. Hi ho, what do you know? The Big Daddy G Show. The Big Daddy G Show, The Big Daddy G Show. Hi ho, what do you know? The Big Daddy G Show, The Big Daddy G Show, The Big Daddy G Show. All right, kids, um, as a special treat for you, we have Lunar, and they're going to play a couple of uh, numbers for you. And um, if you'll notice, uh, Ty is in the back there. He's going to attempt to play the bongos, uh, but in a comedic way. 
And to the person that called and asked about why I was mixing the two alcohols, um, <clears throat> it's all going to the same place. So who cares? All right. Um, here's to less brain cells. Guys, take it away. You know, love is, is an incredible thing, and we don't know love like we should. We always talk about, I have unconditional love. Unconditional love is, we don't even know it, because if a person stops stimulating us, we stop loving them. You're not interesting to talk to anymore. Goodbye. Bye. Baseball bat, you watch nigga loaded and say you know I'm already out that. I'm coming through, I got cheese, girl, but not like a rat, and it ain't like that. I got a question for you. Can I trust you more than Scooby Doo? Are you willing to go the distance and prove it too? Cause I'll reciprocate the gesture from my point of view. I'ma show you how special you are by the way I treat you. Even though most of the guys have left you all defeated. In my mind, you always get back what you give. But the problem is that most people don't give up. Our generation likes to leave when love starts to hurt. But newsflash, that ain't the way that love really works. will be the last one, yes. Get all the way through this one this time. Go ahead and get down, let me see how you get it. How you get it, let me see you get it up in the city, girl. Yeah, get with it. Yeah, get with it, girl. Yeah, I'm trying to dance all night, girl. Trying to get to know you. Trying to get to know you. Now I'm playing. From across the room and my eyes get wide I hope you ain't dumb Cause I'm zoomed on them thighs Where you been, where you been, where you been, baby? Hey, this girl is fine So sweet like red wine Baby, come on, let me get you now Hey, let me get you now Might take a chance at a glance soon I might not take you out on a dance Knock out your lights Now don't you fight the feeling that feels tonight Taking flight higher than flying kites Crazy heights coasting on cloud night Feeling fine, feeling fine till your mind Unwinds. Oh, what, uh, wait, I just met you, but it feel great. Don't debate your hips when they really want to shake. Cause it got you feeling so good, feeling so good, feeling so good. Can you relate? Moving your body and let it gyrate. Now back and forth like a shape. Wait, keep it popping so often the other people want to hate and instigate. But you remain calm, whispering on my ear, grabbing on my arm. Saying, baby, don't move too quick for me. Just bring it back on me. But please groove them hips for me. I can't wait for you to take me back to your place. I just know that you are going to be my ace. Girl, you better go ahead and get about my face. 
Cause I don't play that. So go ahead and just go and get down. Let me see how you get it. How you get it? Let me see you get it up in the city, girl. Yeah, get with it. Yeah, get with it, girl. Yeah, I'm trying to dance all night, girl. Trying to get to know you. Trying to get to know you. Now I'm playing, girl. These games starting to annoy me. Starting to annoy me. Go and get down. Let me see how you get it. How you get it? Let me see you get it up in the city, girl. Yeah, get with it. Yeah, get with it, girl. Yeah, I'm trying to dance all night, girl. Trying to get to know you. Trying to get to know you. Now I'm playing, girl. These games starting to annoy me. Starting to annoy me. See, this is the part of the song where you got to go get you a Big Daddy G drink. You see how big his martini glass was? That martini glass was bigger than my dreams. You need something like that. So I see this girl, right? Yeah. So we get to jigging again. I'm kissing the hand while she is giggling in. Steadily sipping on gin. Where do I begin? I think she is my balance, my zen, and my equilibrium. <laughs> I think that's the alcohol talking. Like Christopher, yeah, I need to get walking. At the wrong tree, looking up and I'm barking. These schemes are the cribs that I'm talking about. These schemes are the girl of my dreams. Being in a club is straight up. <sighs> oh. So, you know, what was that you gave me in the green room? Uh, gasoline, Windex. Oh. gasoline and Windex. Why'd you give me a shot of that? I don't like it. We got something to do. Go and get down, let me see how you get it. How you get it, let me see you get it up in the city, girl. Yeah, get with it. With it, girl, yeah, I'm trying to dance all night, girl, trying to get to know you, trying to get to know you, I'm playing, girl. Thank you guys. And yeah, we're done. So he's follow us on Instagram and SoundCloud. Lunar, L O O N A R. On Instagram, it's Lunar Music, though. Go and hit that follow. <laughs>